Welcome back to the Beat the Odds Horse Racing Show. On this episode, we're going to take you through my eyes of this past weekend's major stakes races. We're going to be going stride by stride as what I'm seeing during this race, as what made the difference between winning and losing. Plus, at the end, we'll finish it off with our top 25. Let's get the ball rolling, and we'll start it off with the City of Hope Mile. Almandaris going in. And they're off in the City of Hope Mile, presented by my racehorse, Paxa Wallop. Gets a quick start. Con We're going to stop it right here. It was a good start for all, except number five. Number three, the favorite, is going to be in a beautiful stalking position. All right, let's keep going. Clued on the outside is sprinting up to take the lead, and Astronomer now moves up to claim second. Johannes is fourth and relaxing nicely, four lengths off the lead. Trickery is just outside of him, followed by stretch running du jour. Racing on the inside of Almendaris, and Easter is at the back of the field. Conclude gets over to the rail and leads the way by two over Astronomer second, Paxawallop third. Umberto Rispoli has Johannes in fourth, five lengths off the lead under a nice hold. The favorite is really has the three long shots as is his targets. He knows he's better. It's just all about navigating a trip from that inside spot, but he's in a beautiful position. He's just in front of Trickery still with DeJour, followed by Almendaris, who's eight lengths off the lead, three quarters back to Easter. They're heading to the half mile pole behind Conclude who's been there throughout and leads by two, chased intently by Astronomer, packs a wall up side by side with Johannes. Then Trickery, joined at the rail by DeJour, that pair six lengths off the lead, both of whom starting to roll now. Another couple of lengths to Almendaris, who is on the outside of Easter, who's trailed throughout, Conclude keeps going, two length lead, but here's Johannes, and Johannes looms between horses. We're gonna stop it right here. All he has to do on Johans is move outside of this leader and go on by. He's got the jump on everybody else, and this race is pretty much over. Says he's had a great trip, and he's poised to pounce at the top of the stretch. Johannes up to take the lead. Du jour has surfaced with his rally, and Trickery is in fourth, a 16 to go, and Johannes puts away Conclude and opens up another dazzling display for Johannes to win the City of Hope Mile presented by my racehorse blanket photo for second including an oncoming Almendaris. Next up we're going to do the Eddie D Stakes. We're set and they're off in the California Crown. We're going to stop it right here. And what a perfect line the starter got him off in. What a great break for all. LED stakes presented by FanDuel. And it is Noble Reflection who gets the first call. But now rushing up fast buck with his natural speed up to take the lead away from him. And Boss Sully is third in the opening stages. Then Air Force Red, King of Gosford along the inside. Big Invasion not far behind. Just six lengths off them, racing two clear of two rivers over. It's a gap of four to first piece, who's followed by step forward. The two trailers are Eamon and Johnny Padres is at the back of the field. Down the hill, chasing Fast Buck. Fast Buck leads it by a length and a half. Boss Sully angles out to come after him in second, and Noble Reflection is racing in third. It's another three lengths back to the next flight with a quarter of a mile to go as Boss Sully. Every, well, pretty much every single horse, 99.9998 horses. When they hit the dirt on the down the hill, they float wide. But what sticks out to me with this image and how they've turned into the stretch is what a turn by this gray horse. As I think it comes to be the reason why this horse wins the Eddie D stakes is up on even terms with Fast Buck. Fast Buck trying to cling to the lead. Boss Sully first piece is coming through smartly along the inside. Has the narrowest of openings. Look at this. 
the horse got through, the winner got through on the rail, whereas the horse that came in second, he's five wide, he had to go around horses. That turn was the difference between winning and losing. What a turn, what a ride. What a race. Get through, and here he comes. First piece takes off inside the furlong pole and opens up a three-length lead on Air Force Red. First piece, and Mike Smith, stellar in the California Crown Eddie D presented by FanDuel. Air Force Red was second, and then it was a photo for third involving King of Gosford and Big Invasion. Moving on to the John Henry. And Balnikov to the outside stall. And they're off in the California crown. John Henry. Let's stop it right here. What a start by all, especially Cabo Spirit on the rail. This, calls, this horse caught a flyer. Henry Turf Championship presented by First Bet. And it's a quick start as expected for Cabo Spirit. Dicey Mochara is up close in the early stages, and these two are 1-2 as they come into the stretch for the first time. There goes Harvard, is racing on the outside of the gray masterpiece, who tucks in just behind the front runner. Then El Encinal, racing in between horses, just four What sticks out to me here is Cabo Spirit was able to control his speed after that flyer. He was able to get out and slow it down. They went 25 seconds for the opening quarter. Lengths off the lead. Seven Wonders is next. Devan Propos is in some traffic at this stage, covered up by Gold Phoenix, who's three deep and five or six lengths off the lead. Balnikov toward the back of the field with two behind him, big blue line, and Rock Emperor is at the back. Approximately a dozen lengths covers the field as Cabo Spirit takes them along, leading the way by a length to Dicey Mochara in second, and Masterpiece drafting in behind the top pair third. There goes Harvard, four off the pace in fourth the half mile he didn't go any uh faster than he did the first quarter so the half mile was still relatively pretty slow and he was able to spread out that field look how spread out they are in this image that's huge and that will serve him wonders coming down the lane they're followed by Seven Wonders, who has lost a little bit of ground, passed now by Gold Phoenix, who inches up willingly while three deep. Just in behind that group comes El Encinal, who's in between horses. Now Devin Propos gets a little bit of breathing room and moves up inside of Balnikov, Big Blue Line, and Rock Emperor. They're a half mile from home in the California Crown John Henry Turf Championship, presented by First Bet. And it's still Cabo Spirit and Abel Cedillo in front by two lengths to Dicey Mochara in second. Masterpiece continues in third. There goes Harvard on the outside, takes that third spot. Then comes Gold Phoenix on the outside of Seven Wonders. Devan Propos with eight to make up. They turn for home and Cabo Spirit tries to sprint away from them with a three-length lead. Masterpiece along the end. Cabo Spirit was able to run literally 25 second quarters all the way around the racetrack. This race is over. Side, Dicey Mochara in between, and outside of them, there goes Harvard, a 16th to go. Cabo Spirit is brave, a length and a half with the wire coming, and Cabo Spirit pulls it off under Abel Cedillo. It's Cabo Spirit all the way. There goes Harvard with second. Mass Moving on to Churchill, we're going to the Ak Ak Stakes. Eight, and they're off. And a good start for Stage Raider, who races right out for the lead. Caliostra with some good speed as well. Three technique from the outside, and Tumba Rumba. Down toward the rail, comes up on through two. Tumba Rumba, Stage Raider, and Caliostro. The three of them right across the track as they cross onto the main track. And a break of two, back to three. Let's stop it right here. We got three out of the four horses going for the lead. That says to me, speed duel. Let's keep it going. Technique, who's racing in fourth. So Tumba Rumba comes on through to take the lead. It's Tumba Rumba leading the way down the back stretch run. Stage Raider is right there racing in second. Kelly Oster on the outside, up and on the pace. Three wide while third. And three Technique is just drafting in behind them fourth as they head down the back stretch run. So it is Tumba Rumba with a short lead after an opening quarter. 
in 23 seconds flat. So they hit the far turn. Tumbarumba. These three horses in front went 46 and 1 for the half, and they're all in a line. But look right behind him. Three technique is loaded, and he just ready for his cue. Short lead stage Raider and Caliostro now comes on three wide. So these three right across the track with three furlongs to go. And three technique is just in behind them fourth. Only two and a half lengths back as they head for the top of the stretch. Tumba Rumba's coming under pressure. Stage Raider in between. And Caliostro three wide on the outside and three technique. Three technique switches to the far outside. They're off the turn. And it's Caliostro up for a short lead. Stage Raider fighting on. So to Tumba Rumba. You couldn't have asked for a better horse race, especially with four horses. You literally have four horses across the track with any one of these horses could win. Let's see who won. And here comes three technique. All four stacked across the track with a furlong to go. And three technique is picking them all up. Three technique. From off the pace, goes on to do it. Tumbarumba fights on for second. Three technique, the winner. Moving on to Belmont at Aqueduct, the Pilgrim Stakes. How did the jockey, how did the jockey of fully authorized stay on? Okay, let's keep going. Dumbling shortly after the break there was fully authorized. It's towards the back end of the field. So that's Dumble there after leaving the gate. The speed is with Noble Confessor. Okay, the horses have started to get into position. There's four horses across the track going for the lead. So that says to me, fast pace. So the eight, if he could drop in, and Stalk, he's in a perfect position to win this race. But let's see how the rest of the race shakes out. Right out to the front, we'll get over to the rail here as they are four across the course in the early stages. Flying Mohawk will now press on and Flying Mohawk is the leader, is up by a half length. Might try to cross over and does. Flying Mohawk is the leader, is up by a clear length now. Noble Confessor is towards the inside here of Smooth Breeze, they're second and third. So Zulu Kingdom and Noble Confessor they both backed out of it. Very smart on their part by the jockeys. Just behind them, that's Zulu Kingdom tracking from fourth to the outside of that one comes. Early adopter who's right there in fifth. Behind them is without caution towards the back end of the field. Second to last is Concord Green. And after the start, the trailer fully authorized. 21.39 is that posted opening quarter mile here as it's going to be smooth breeze to the outside and flying Mohawk to the inside. And they start to really slow things down. Showing a half mile time of 47 and four. Snug hold on Noble Confessor and also Early Adopter is right there. They're a shared third and fourth as they approach a half mile left to go and they are stacking up in behind these leaders. Zulu Kingdom's trying to run on in between horses there as Concord Green wants a way out of there, fully authorized. So they really slowed this pace down with that second quarter. And look at Zulu Kingdom. He's stopped and he's bottled up. He the Joel Rosario has a decision to make of how to get out of this mess. Let's see how the race, the rest of the race goes. Trying to hold that spot. Without caution is the trailer. They're well into the far turn now here in the Pilgrim. Flying Mohawk is still in front, is up by a nose. Engaged to the outside is Smooth Breeze. At the rail, there's Noble Confessor just waiting for a way through. Zulu Kingdom is looking for a way out. Early adopter is gonna get the first run. So the eight, he's had a perfect trip. He out of the gate, he got that stalking trip. He let everybody go. The one is bottled in behind the top two. He needs to get out. And then Zulu Kingdom is last. So he's got to make one heck of a run down this stretch. Here three wide. They reach the top of the lane, and it's still flying Mohawk down towards the inside. Smooth breeze, and here's early adopter. And now Zulu Kingdom is in the clear. The four got out, and he's coming with that run. The Chad Brown one, horses look like they're going to run one, two. But the one, he's got to make a decision. Does he split these top horses in front of him? He's got a lot of horse. Or does he go around him? Let's see how the, the stretch drive of this race shakes out.
It's Zulu Kingdom is now sprinting on the grandstand side and it pushes on by. Gets a little tight there, but Zulu Kingdom is opening up here. Down towards the inside, it's Noble Confessor who's running on. Inside the final 16th, Zulu Kingdom's almost there. Noble Confessor lunging. Zulu Kingdom is the winner. Zulu Kingdom wins it over Nova Confessor. Then came early adopter in another photo. That was Smooth Breeze with Flying Mohawk. Get one minute four. Being in the clear at the top of the stretch was the difference between winning and losing. Because the one, he was in so much trouble, he got out too late. The four got out earlier, and it was the difference between winning and losing. B8 and three. Also at Belmont at Aqueduct is the Gallant Bloom Stakes. And they're off. Hot Fudge has early speed, and so does Nick. Okay, stop it right here. Now that Ways and Means broke beautifully, I don't see a way that she loses. Let's go see if that's true. Style, and here comes Nick Style towards the inside with Ways and Means. In between horses, that's the top trio. Just off of them, Pacific Rose and the trailer. Sterling Silver pretty tightly bunched here as they work up the back stretch and Nick Styles got the lead. But it's a tenuous one as in between horses. Here comes Ways and Means just cruising along. Now stalking right here from second. Hot Fudge is three wide and third. At the rail is Sterling Silver and now the trailer is Pacific Rose. Less than four furlongs to go. 22 and three was the opening quarter mile. Nick Style is only ahead in front with Ways and Means ranging up to the outside and here comes the move from Ways and Means just moving right along here has gotten within a nose of the lead. Under drive now is Hot Fudge being encouraged to move forward. Sterling Silver is right there in fourth and the trailer Pacific Rose 45 and Ways and Means has just struck the lead and she's loaded. This race is over. Four for the half mile time. Nick Style is very game towards the inside, but now Ways and Means is trying to assert, and Ways and Means gets the cue and kicks for home. Ways and Means is extending the margin now. Nick Style is very... This was a perfect Breeders' Cup prep for her. She's going to be one of the favorites in the Philly and Mare Sprint. She's going to be hard to beat. I love this prep from her. They asked a little bit of her. She delivered onto the Breeders' Cup. Brazilian towards the inside, inside the final furlong. Ways and Means approaches the final 16th, and this is going to be an easy victory here. Ways and Means wins the great two, Gallant Bloom. Nick Style second, then the New York Bread. Sterling Silver finished third in one minute, 15.4, six seconds. Next raced up is the Remington Park Oaks. And outside to Alpine Princess. All in. They're off for the Remington Park Oaks. Good start. Miss Code West away sharply. Likewise for change it up from the real Chi Chi right. The two favorites broke beautifully and they will be in prime position going around the first turn. Right there outside Alpine Princess rolling up into fourth. Lemon S behind runners fifth, ahead better than Teresa's Nightmare. After that, Just Be Quiet is almost a length better than the Gray Candy Gray, who's forced out very wide at the back into the first turn. Up front, Change It Up leads the way by a little more than a length. Miss Code West tracking second outside. Chi Chi inside is third. Alpine Princess is a wide fourth, but only two and a half back. To the back stretch is Teresa's Nightmare in fifth. Half length better than Lemon S now clear to the outside. Gap of two and a half more to Candy Gray in the trailer. Still, just be quiet. Five furlongs. Flo is just stalking Miss Code West. He knows that that is the only other horse in this race. Alpine Princess is just waiting for Flo to tell her to go. To go in the Oaks. Company up front. Change it up is there. Miss Code West inching up now almost on even terms. Alpine Princess is now third, just a half length back. Nothing yet from Chi Chi, Teresa's Nightmare, close up fifth. Lemon S outside sixth, only four from the front for the half mile to go. Candy Gray can see them all and just be quiet, continues to watch eight lengths off the front. To the far turn in the Oaks, Miss Code West has the lead now by a neck. Three furlongs left. Alpine Princess rolls on outside and is now on even terms. And this pair getting clear of the rest just like that. Midway through the... Now it's just simply a match race to see who's better down the... 
down uh, to the wire as the two ho best horses have hooked up. Let's see this match race go down to the wire. The turn. Inside, Miss Code West. Outside, Alpine Princess. Quarter mile to go. Lemon S is third now, beginning to gain. Likewise, Chi Chi in fourth. Top of the stretch, Alpine Princess is there, and it's now on top by a pair. Miss Code West doesn't have an answer. It's chasing second. Lemon this race is over. The only way Alpine Princess lost was if she was too close to a very hot pace. But what a good win against inferior competition. Luminous is third and gaining inside the furlong pole. Alpine Princess going on here in a big way under Florent Giroux. Alpine Princess will easily take the Remage Park Oaks. Battle for second. Miss Code West will win that tight on the show photo. Lemoness, and just be quiet. And now the Oklahoma Derby. They're off in the Oklahoma Derby. All right, let's stop it right here, right out the gate. Flo is already behind the eight bill on the six, who loves to be up front on the lead, and he is second to last right out the gate. So he's going to have to use him a little bit to get into position. Good start for all inside EJ won the cup. Was on the lead briefly. There goes Most Wanted, wanting it more and going to the front, up by two almost as they get to the line first time. Vlad Hanby is in there second, battling with Dymatic as they head to the turn. Mina is fourth and outside. Inside, indispensable fifth, waiting. The position is secured. Now it needs to get Most Wanted into a nice, beautiful rhythm around this racetrack. For room, and EJ won the cup is at the back under Mike Smith. Five from the lead. Up front, most wanted shows the way through the first turn. There by a little more than a link. Indispensable now got that room inside and quickly goes up to join. Most wanted on the front end. As they go to the back stretch, Dymatic bobbing heads with Flat Hamby with six furlongs to go. Gap of two and a half more. Back to EJ one of the cup fifth. Mina as the trailer. Nine from the lead. Indispensable now takes over up front. It's in I'm okay with Flo and most wanted losing the lead here. The one had to use himself. And that might come back to cost him down the lane. He's still in a great spot. The two horses that he's got to worry about in, are behind him in Dematic and EJ won the cup. So Most Wanted really holds the keys to this race. He can dictate the pace. He's right up there and get the jump on them. Dispensable on the lead with five panels left. Half length back to most wanted. Dymatic is third, positioned outside, a neck better than Flat Hamby. Three off the leaders. EJ won the cup, and Mike Smith now swing out for clear sailing. Fifth, but with all the room they need, and starting to advance quickly. Under a half mile left, nothing at the back for Mina. Heading to the final turn. It's indispensable there. Pressed now a little bit more by most wanted. There goes EJ won the cup, third and gaining into the bend. Dymatic is fourth, five from the front. Flat Hamby trying fifth at the rail. Midway through the turn in the Derby up front, it is most wanted getting back against Indispensable. And EJ won the cup, poised to pounce with a quarter mile left. Dramatic fourth, flat hand be fifth, off the turn. As we come into the lane, the longtime leader is now backing up and looks like he might be running for third. EJ won the cup, has put in one hell of a run. He's flying, and most wanted is going to have to show that he's a classy individual. To hold off, EJ won the cup down the lane in the Oklahoma Derby. To the stretch for the Oklahoma Derby, most wanted, digging in and trying to pull away, showing a little bit more, but here comes EJ won the cup on the outside, and EJ won the cup, puts a nose on the lead inside the furlong pole. Race. It looks to me like EJ won the cup has taken the lead here, but most wanted is getting ready to show you how game he is and what a fantastic race this was. Son, most wanted battling back, very game. Outside EJ won the cup, inside indispensable. Most wanted slight edge late. He won the cup one more try. Most wanted stays undefeated to win the Oklahoma Derby in a very game stretch duel with EJ won the cup and indispensable. Santa Anita had a big weekend. Let's start it off with the Santa Anita Sprint Championship. And they're off 
in the Santa Anita Sprint Championship presented by Estrella Jalisco. And Straight No Chaser breaks beautifully, goes to the front for all mankind is up close and roll on big. Okay, let's stop it right here. I'm surprised that Fort Bragg didn't show more speed coming off the layoff. But let's keep it rolling. Joe not far behind in third. Fort Bragg will stock from fourth. He's tugging his way forward three lengths off the leaders. It's another length back to Neiman, racing on the outside of Banyek, and the trailer is see through it. It's a compact group. Six lengths covers them. Straight no chaser, the one to catch, going to the three-eighth pole. Bounding clear a length and a half for all mankind in second. Roll on Big Joe. Fort Bragg, yellow cap inches up three deep. Moving up to claim that second spot and coming after straight no chaser now. A gap of five, see through it. Outside Banyak and Neiman trails. Straight no chaser turns for home. This race is over. Everybody else is spinning their wheels, and Straight No Chaser is loaded. This race is over. In command, sprints away again. It's suddenly four lengths. Roll on Big Joe, reclaim second inside Fort Bragg. Straight No Chaser sizzling home in his return to the great race place. Straight No Chaser and John Velasquez trounced them in the Santa Anita Sprint Championship presented by Estrella Jalisco. Roll on Big Joe was second, third between C. Thruitt and Fort Bragg. And now the Zenyatta. And there How did the jockey on Alpha Bella stay on? They're off in the Zenyatta, and Alpha Bella stumbled right out of the gate, still is able to show good speed. Nothing like you, hard ridden. And Che Eva. Looks like we have a speed duel brewing. Asota is in between them. Three of them vie for command. Desert Dawn is fourth and unhurried in the early stages, and Sugarfish is guided over to the rail. Into the first turn, it's Alpha Bella and nothing like you. One, two. Che Evasora now two lengths back in third, followed by Desert Dawn, four and a half off the pace in fourth, and Sugarfish at the back with six furlongs to run. Alpha Bella a neck. Nothing like you presses. Two more, Che Evasora still third. Desert Dawn called on to get a little closer in fourth, and Sugarfish. What a race from Alpha Bella so far. She felt her nose out the gate. She's been leading the entire race. What a race so far from her. No excuses from nothing like you. And what a ride so far from on Sugarfish. Saved all the ground. She's on the rail. Let's see how the rest of this race turns out. They've taken much closer order. Four lengths covers the field with four and a half furlongs to go in the Zenyatta. And it is Alpha Bella, a half length in front. Nothing like you in second, Desert Dawn, widest of all, Sugarfish, Che Evasora loses ground, but still only three lengths covers them all. Heading into the far turn, Alpha Bella, nothing like you, aggressively ridden now, trying to keep pace. Those two pass the three eighth pole. As they go around the far turn, Alpha Bella is sitting pretty. Desert Dawn is coming. Nothing like you is done. But Sugarfish is sitting right behind them, looking pretty. Join three wide by Desert Dawn, and then it's Sugarfish at the rail in fourth. Coming to the quarter pole, Alpha Bella sneaks away. Nothing like you could not keep pace. On the inside, Sugarfish is trying to become a danger. Desert Dawn outside of her, top of the lane. You think Sugarfish would just go right to the outside of Alpha Bella and go on by and win this thing? Wrong. Watch this. Alpha Bella and Sugarfish. Sugarfish ops to the inside for the final eighth of a mile. Closing ground steadily on Alpha Bella, who's tough. Alpha Bella or Sugarfish. Sugarfish on the inside, burst through late. And Sugarfish and Tyler Bays pulling away late to score in the Zenyatta. Alpha Bella was clearly second best. Desert Dawn was third. Let's go back to Belmont at Aqueduct. And let's look at the Vosberg. And 
they're off. Dean delivers right out towards the front and Mufasa applies the pressure immediately. At the rail here, Sevens Eleven wants to join that early fray and Lord Miles is hustled along to keep up with the early group. In between horses is Scotland. And Dean delivers and Mufasa get out the great the gate really great and they're sitting 1-2. Mufasa is better than Dean delivers so he's just waiting to stalk and pounce. Scotland is the only uh, horse in this race that can possibly win. And from where he is in this early stage of the race, he might be in some trouble. So I think this race goes through Mufasa from the jump. The early trailer, Baby Yoda, Dylan Davis, which is right to the center of the racetrack as they move up the back stretch, and Dean Delivers is the leader. It's Dean Delivers, who's in front, is up by three quarters of a length. Mufasa is fully in pursuit as they went 23 seconds flat for that opening quarter mile here in the Vosburg, and Dean Delivers is only up by a half length. It's a snug hold on Mufasa, who gets a touch closer now with four furlongs left to travel. At the rail there is Sevens Eleven, is holding that rail position with Scotland, who's now progressing for Junior Alvarado, has taken third, is fully in pursuit is still in hand as they're well into the far turn now baby yoda starts to launch a rally from the back and lord miles is the trailer 46.47 for the half mile time dean delivers is still there mufasa has not been asked yet as they reach the top of the stretch and now Muf mufasa has now taken the lead scotland really has had a nice trip to get up into contention but mufasa is loaded he's just waiting for the jockey to give him the signal to go. Mufasa gets the cue. It's Mufasa. Dean delivers down towards the inside, and Scotland is running on. Baby Yoda with a lot of ground to make up. A final furlong left to go, and Mufasa is just sprinting clear. It's Mufasa now up by three inside the final 16th. Mufasa is going to win the Vosburg impressively and punches ticket to the Breeders' Cup. Mufasa wins it over Scotland. Then came Dean delivers and Baby Yoda. It won at 22.51 seconds. Now let's look at the Joe Hirsch from Belmont at Aqueduct. Got it. And they're off. Get smoking right out to the front and Silver Knot. It's not going to let this leader get away. It's going to be so Get Smokin and Silver Knot, an early one, too. None of these early positions shock me. Get Smokin's got to go to the lead. Silver Knot's right there. Far Bridge is going to be stalking. And the Goddess is going to come from behind. This didn't shock me at all. Far Bridge is well settled in third. Is to the outside of Emmanuel, who's a little keen at the rail. Wants to move on through. Wants to get closer to this early leader. And content to be the trailer early is Warlike Goddess. Five lengths the trailer. Get smoking. We'll take him into that turn. It's Get Smokin', who's now well clear, and Get Smokin' is up by a length and a half. Silver Knot is comfortable right there for Dylan Davis in second. Still wanted to go as Emmanuel down towards the inside and Manny Franco. It's Emmanuel who's just waiting for some room, is at the rail, is in that third position. Get Smokin', still the leader, went 24.34 for that opening quarter mile. It's Get Smokin', and Fernando de la Cruz in front. Silver Knot right to the outside, is content to just sit right off of this leader. It's still about a length back. Then at the rail, there's Emmanuel Far Bridge. Now I am by, shocked by this, that how far back Warlike Goddess is. I know she's great, but I don't think she could possibly win from right here. Just chasing them is still in the fourth position, and Warlike Goddess just patiently ridden at the back from Junior Alvarado as they went 49 seconds flat for that half-mile time. Get Smokin' is still the target. It's Get Smokin' who goes into that turn. Silver Knot is not going anywhere, is right there still in second. Emmanuel now more settled in third. Far Bridge. Joel Rosario is in the fourth position, is two and a half, now three off the lead. And no move yet from the trailer Warlike Goddess. They went 114 flat for three quarters of a mile. Get Smokin' is trying to take them all the way. And the Joe Hirsch Turf Classic, Silver Knot, no excuses right there in Look how hard the goddess has had to work to get into even remotely close to attached to this field. She's still a length out of contending to the second to last horse. I think she was way out of it, too far out of it for even to come close.
in second, has been there the entire journey. Emmanuel down at the rail, and Emmanuel's just tracking these two pace setters still with Farbridge in behind that, and just inching closer now, Warlike Goddess, the two-time champ, starts to move in closer with less than a half mile to go. They went 140 and three for the mile, and here comes Silver Knot to the outside of Get Smokin'. Silver Knot has taken the lead. Bad idea by Joel to save ground the entire way. Time to go to plan B. In pursuit is Emmanuel, and here comes Warlike Goddess who's in pursuit, but Silver Knot. Because of that move and he got stopped, he's five lengths back now. Keep it rolling. Tried to get the jump. Warlike Goddess is trying for a three-peat. Has Silver Knot in sights as they reach the top of the lane. It is now Silver Knot in the Godolphin. From here, it looks like Silver Knot should win this race. Maybe it's a two-horse race between him and Warlike Goddess. But let's see how this stretch run comes down to the wire. Blue who kicks for home. Warlike Goddess with every shot to run this rival down. And here she comes. Farbridge is diving down towards the inside. Has run as well. Three across. Now Joel goes back to the rail. And that is the winning move. Across the course. It is now Farbridge who's trying to pull the upset over. Warlike Goddess who comes right back to the outside. Calls upon her class. Farbridge is a neck in front. Farbridge. It is Farbridge. Bridge to win the grade one Joe Hirsch Turf Classic. Warlike Goddess was a very resilient second. Then came Silver Knot. Further back, Emmanuel. And get smoking in two minutes, 32 and one. Now let's go back to Churchill for the Lucas Classic. Here in the gate, and they're off. And Cook Creek caught a flyer right to the front. Opens up to lead by a length and a half. Stiletto Boy, that inside post comes well off the rail. Okay, first thing I notice is, as they come into position, every single horse is in the two to three path, maybe four path, except hit show. Flo brought him down to the rail. Is that the place to be on a sloppy track? Or is it better to be in the two or three path? Let's check it out. Tries to get to the outside of Cook Creek, but Bullsey is there, and Warrior Johnny is stuck very wide, four wide for Warrior Johnny as they hit the first turn. So it is Cook Creek out there showing the way, and Stiletto Boy comes on to stock from second, and Warrior Johnny moves with them to make it three. They went 23-3 and three for the opening quarter. Hit show is in a beautiful spot. These closers have a lot to do. Cross the track early. Two and a half lengths back to Hitcho, who settles toward the rail, racing in fourth. Bolsey's fifth by five. Rattle and roll is out in sixth. Happy Americans in seventh. And Disarm is last down the backstretch run with an opening quarter in 23 and 3 on the front end. And on the front end, it's Cook Creek. Cook Creek leading the way just under a length. Right there, still little boy second. I mean, at this point, it looks like two different races. You have the top three that are dueling for the lead with Hit Show right behind them. And then the closers, they're so far back. It looks like two different races at this point. Warrior Johnny continues on with them on the outside. Third, the three of them continue on past the half-mile pole. Tracking them is Hit Show in fourth, three lengths farther back. Five more back, rattle and roll. Trying to go past Bolsey. Disarm is under pressure at the back of the pack, but is out of last. Happy American is to trailer as they round the far turn. The leader is Cook Creek. Cook Creek heading for the quarter pole. Warrior Johnny now in second. Hit Show's now in third. From the back of the pack, rattle and roll revs up far outside. As we come into the lane, it's down to two horses. Cook Creek and Hit Show. Let's see who wins the battle. Right fourth, Bolsey cut the corner fifth. Disarm with a lot of work to do. They're off the turn and heading for the eighth pole. Cook Creek trying to tough it out, but Hit Show's coming on from the outside. Warrior Johnny is green in behind. Our first clip, we showed you that Hit Show was the only horse on the rail. Now there's six wide, seven wide. Behind Disarm at the dive to the rail. Rattle and roll, final 16th. Hit shows up for the lead. Cook Creek tries to fight with Hit Show. Is doing so. Cook Creek coming back on Hit Show, but Hit Show determined. 
It show the winner in the end, running down Cook Creek, who is game all the way to the wire. Farther back, either disarm or... Next up is the Woodward Stakes. All set for the Woodward. And they're off. Right out the gate, Tappet Trice is going to get left. And Skippy Longstocking. And Mass Parade are going out for the lead. Skippy Longstocking shows the way. It's Skippy Longstocking right out towards the front and gets off the rail, is out in the two path, and now will cross over and gets close to the rail now with mild pressure from Mask Parade. It's these two into the turn, and now these two do hook up in the early stages. Mass Parade takes it right to Skippy Longstocking, who is going to take off the early kick. I'm very surprised to see Skippy Longstocking give up the lead. And now Skippy Longstocking is ranging up on the outside. Tough opening quarter there as Kruppi is out in the center of the racetrack in third. Tappet Trice is the trailer as Mass Parade and Kendra Carmouche. They're in front. They're up by two. They went 23.36 for the opening quarter mile. Now more settled as Skippy Longstocking is in the center of the racetrack in second. Is in the clear with Kruppi who's right down towards the inside still third. Tappet Trice starts to move forward a touch. There's the gray at the back. Gets encouraged by Dylan Davis to move forward as they're still... I'm very surprised to see Mass Parade this loose of a lead over Skippy Longstocking. And Tappet Trice is starting to move up the rail. That's very interesting. Chasing Mass Parade through a 47 seconds flat. Half mile time. Skippy Longstocking tries to move in closer now. Mass Parade, the big long shot, has still got some run. It's Mass Parade with less than a half mile to go. Skippy Longstocking starts to move in. Tappet Trice made that early move, is down towards the inside, and now Kruppi is in gear for Rad Ortiz Jr. as the new leader ranging up on the outside will be Skippy Longstocking and Manny Franco, and they are now a half length in front of Mass Parade, who's back to second. Kruppi starts to get going, orange cap up on the outside. Tappet Trice just had to steady in behind Mass Parade, who's not done yet as they reach. Okay, Skippy's got the lead. Is Tappet Trice going to go outside? or inside to try and run him down. It's the top of the stretch, 111 and four for three quarters of a mile and Skippy Longstocking is trying to win it right here. It's Skippy Longstocking who now straightens up, has a final furlong to get. Skip They're deep in the stretch and Skippy Longstocking still has a length and a half, two lengths on him. This is gonna get interesting. Skippy Longstocking is now drawing away. Tappet Trice is ranging up on the outside, gets some clear running room, has every shot to run this leader down. Skippy Longstocking is now weary here in the late stages. Tappet Trice is lunging. Tappet Trice gets up and wins it. Tappet Trice wins the Woodward over Skippy Longstocking, Kruppi, and Mass Parade in 1 minute 50 seconds flat. And to finish it off, let's look at the California Crown. In the gate, and they're off in the California Crown Stakes, presented by Sir Davis American Whiskey. And it was a smooth beginning. Stop it right here. Senor Buscador is already out of the race. As Subsanador flashes speed, National Treasure in between horses up to take the lead, and Katona now takes second. Muth is outside of that pair, and Subsanador will now settle in for just in front of Newgate. Senor Buscador is at the back while racing well off the rail. It's National Treasure, uncontested now. Opens up a two-length lead on Katona in second. Muth inches up outside. No problems with... with where everybody's at except Senor Buscador. I wish he was a little bit closer, but I, I know he has no speed. They did go 22 and four. So it's a little faster than I thought they were going to go, but I still think he's too far back. Subsanador, those two stride for stride and only two lengths off of National Treasure. Newgate is close and under a very firm hold is Newgate with four lengths to make up. He's four in front of Senor Buscador. Flavian Pratt and National Treasure. Past the 5 8 pole in charge, a length and a half to Katona in second. Muth red cap, three deep in third. At the rails, Subsanador with Newgate just behind him, still four lengths off the lead with less than a half mile to travel in the California Crown. Senor Buscador is now eight lengths. At this rate, National Treasure looks good. 
So Santa Door looks like he's going to run a big one. Muth is done. And Newgate looks loaded. There's a lot of things that could happen from this point. Off the pace, which has been set by National Treasure. National Treasure every step of the way to Katona. Muth on the outside gets his cue. At the rails, Subsanador still fort. Not much change in the running order since the gate opened. National Treasure carving out all the fractions. Still well within himself at the top of the stretch. And he turns for home with... There's only three options to win this race. Let's see which one of them win the California Crown. The two-length lead, Subsonador comes out to chase him home. And in the sun of the track, Newgate is bearing down in third. Here comes Newgate with big strides after National Treasure. National Treasure, Subsonador, and Newgate. Three of them line up in an absolute thriller. Subsonador in between horses. Here's the line. Subsonador and Mike Smith to win the California Crown Stakes. Presented by Sir Davis American Whiskey in a blanket photo with National Treasure and Newgate, a race that lived up. Now let's finish off this episode with doing our top 25 horses in training. This is brought to you by SeatGeek. Use code BTO Horse Racing for $20 off, off tickets of $50 or more. That's code BTO Horse Racing for $20 off tickets priced at $50 or more. Let's get right into it. Number 25 is Subsanador. Number 24, Tapid Trice. Number 23 is Vava. Number 22, Gunsong. Number 21, Scylla. Number 20, Gunpilot. Number 19, Far Bridge. Number 18, Skippy Longstocking. Number 17, Mystic Dan. Number 16, Next, number 15, Randomized, number 14, Idiomatic, number 13, Highland Falls, number 12, Beau Sachet, number 11, Chili Flag, number 10, Tricari, number 9, Measured Time, number 8, Sierra Leone, number 7, Seize the Gray, Number six, domestic product. Number five, Cogburn. Number four, Power Squeeze. Number three, National Treasure. Number two, Fierceness. And number one, Torpedo Anna. Now make sure you like, subscribe, and turn on that notification bell. It's greatly appreciated. We just hit 5,000 subscribers. We're on the road to 10,000. It'll be greatly appreciated if you hit that subscribe button. Thank you for listening here on or on the audio. It's greatly appreciated. May all your bets be winning ones. And as always, beat the odds.